all right dear children now we will solve two more numericals as i said and with these two numerical problem uh, chapter isothermal and adiabatic processes will get completed okay now problem number three so this is the second last numerical and this problem is also a problem to find the work done by the gas but under adiabatic process okay and the question say that three moles of hydrogen at ntp now hydrogen is a gas but we are considering this gas as what gas ideal gas and which ideal gas is there hydrogen okay and this gas is at ntp you know ntp full form is called normal temperature pressure normal t means temperature okay and p implies pressure normal temperature and what pressure so this gas that means three moles of hydrogen gas means number of molecules of gas is three so n is the number of molecules moles of the gas which is n equals to three the three moles of hydrogen at ntp are allowed to expand adiabatically okay so that the temperature of the gas falls to 273 degree a uh, 263 kelvin so this is the final temperature but the gas is at normal temperature pressure and you know normal temperature means what 273 kelvin or 0 degree celsius now at ntp the temperature which is considered as initial temperature i consider the gas is initially at a temperature and this temperature is normal temperature so this initial or normal temperature is almost 0 degree celsius which means 273 kelvin okay now this temperature is now falls to or uh, 263 Kelvin. So the final temperature is T2, which is 263 Kelvin. Okay. Now find the work done by the gas. Find the work done by the what? Gas. So to calculate the work done by the gas when the temperature falls from T1 to T2, okay. When R value is given, R is the universal gas constant, which is 8.31 joule per mole per Kelvin, and your constant value, gamma, is how much? 1.4. Then we can calculate the work done by the gas under adiabatic process. So we are following a what process? Adiabatic process. And the formula is work done by the gas. Okay, work done by the gas. Okay, is given by W. And the formula in terms of temperature is Nr by gamma minus 1, T1 minus T2. Because you can see T1 is greater than T2. Okay, so formula is nr by gamma minus 1 t1 minus t2 so children this formula i have already derived and explained in details in the topic called work done by the gas uh, under adiabatic expansion uh, under adiabatic expansion and all okay so let me just substitute the value n3 r is 8.31 gamma is how much 1.4 minus 1 okay the t1 value is how much 273 minus t2 is how much 263 okay so this is 3 into 8.31 by 0 0.4 into 273 minus 63 263 means 10 okay now we can just uh, do the calculation by multiplying this two quantity 3 into 8.31 if you multiply you get 24.93 okay into 10 by 0 0.4 now 24.93 into 10 if you multiply is 249.3 and divided by 0 0.4 and children definitely you do divide this quantity with the help calculator 249.3 by 0 0.4 you get approximately 263 uh, 623 joule so approximately uh, in a whole number the value of work done is how much 623 uh, joule so how much work is done by the gas under this process 623 joule so this is one of the important numerical based on work done by the gas under adiabatic expansion okay now we solve the next problem that is number four children problem number four is also very simple okay and this is the last numerical problem that we solve from the chapter isothermal and adiabatic process okay problem four says that a certain volume of a gas so there is a gas whose certain volume is there at 27 degree celsius and this is a temperature and uh, 10 to 5 newton per meter square pressure expand isothermally and you know when the gas expand isothermally basically what happened the temperature remained constant 
the temperature is 27 degrees Celsius, it has been constant. But in case of isothermal process, you know what happened when uh, the volume increases, the pressure decreases. That means pressure and volume are inversely proportional to each other because under isothermal process, when we take a gas like an ideal gas, okay, then it follow Boyle's law. It follow what law? Boyle's law. So the pressure which is given is 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square, and this is the initial pressure. I mark this as P1. This is 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square. So this is the what pressure? Initial pressure. Okay, this is the initial pressure. Uh, this pressure of the gas expands isothermally. The gas is expanding isothermally until the volume of the gas is doubled. That means you don't know what is the initial volume of gas, but that volume now it get doubled when the pressure, uh, the uh, when we reach to that pressure, and that pressure will be final pressure. Because in this question, we have to find the final pressure of the gas, where gamma is 1.4. Okay. Now to solve this problem under isothermal process okay the pressure is given initial pressure now you have to find final pressure so i final pressure i consider p2 let p2 be the what pressure final pressure and this pressure only we need to calculate and children the condition is given that the gases since the gas is what gas is expand expanding what isothermally Okay, the gas is expanding isothermally, which means the temperature remains constant. Temperature remains what? Constant. Okay, and that temperature is already how much? 27 degrees Celsius. Now, the volume is not known, so I write on let B1 equals to B be the what volume? Initial volume. Initial also called final volume. Initial of original volume of the gas. But condition is given only that the volume has been doubled. Okay, now volume will be doubled. So that volume will be final volume. So it will be 2B. 2B means double the initial volume. And this is the what volume? Final volume. And children, the condition is already given that the gas is expanding isothermally. So when gas like ideal gas expand isothermally means, means basically we follow what law? Boyle's law. That means for isothermal expansion. This is for what for expansion? Isothermal expansion. Okay. We follow what law? Boyle's law. And you know how can you write Boyle's law? P1 B1 equals to P2 P2. This is according to which law? Boyle's law. So according to Boyle's law, P1 B1 equals to P2 P2. So what actually you need to find out? P2. So I make P2 as a subject. P1 B1 by B2. Okay. So let's substitute the value. Now P1 is how much? 10 to the power 5. B1 is B only. B2 means 2B. So B and B cancel out. So 10 to the power 5 by 2 means I can write this as 10 into 10 to the power 4 by 2. Just splitting this power as 10 into 10 to the power 4. So that I can divide 10 by 2. And you know 10 by 2 means 5 into 10 to the power 4. And the unit is Newton per meter square. So what is the final pressure? It is 5 into 10 to the power 4 Newton per meter square. And definitely this pressure is less than the initial pressure. Because when volume expand, uh, volume increases, pressure decreases. And the final pressure is less than the initial pressure. So this is one of the numericals, simple numerical based even on isothermal expansion. Okay. So children, I have solved total 4 numerical problems just to uh, make imp aware that uh, these problems are this type of problem will be asked in the examination okay so you can solve other numerical problems similar numerical problem from your textbook also okay thank you so much so we have completed this chapter isothermal and adiabatic expand processes now from next class we will start new chapter the last chapter under unit number eight that is second law of thermodynamics thank you so much